Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars figure review. Today we're taking a look at another figure from the Black Series 6 inch line and in keeping with the Mandalorian theme ahead of season 2 of the show coming next week I thought we'd take a look at the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin, from the latest wave, or one of the latest waves at least, of the Black Series line. This is again a really, really cool figure, uh, one that I really recommend picking up. This is of course the Mandalorian in his Beskar armour. And before we jump into the review, I just want to cut to the chase and touch base on one of my main gripes with this figure. For the most part, it's a phenomenal addition to the line, but it does come with one minor issue that I really wanted to touch base on in this review and give a shout out to a fellow member of the community for providing a fix. Now, as you probably know if you've picked this figure up for yourself, this figure does come with the plastic cape that was included with the first Black Series Mandalorian figure. Now, because this figure also includes a jetpack, um, the plastic cape is essentially pointless because you can't display the figure with both the cape and the jetpack at the same time. The cape gets in the way of the slot where the jetpack sits and you just can't do it. And that kind of defeats the object for me personally. One of the things I was really excited about with this figure um, was the fact that it came with the jetpack and the cape and you'd be able to create this really cool and unique look for this, uh, for this figure. But you just can't do it. So you can either display this figure with the plastic cape or with the jetpack. You can't display it with both. Now I want to give a massive shout out to Matt over at Mudhorn Customs who has put together, as you can see, this soft goods cape for the Mandalorian. This is a wired uh, soft goods cape which can be posed and displayed on the figure as you wish. And as you can see, I've got it in a in a somewhat decent pose at the minute, just off to the side with the Mudhorn signet on show on the shoulder plate there. And as you can see, it's just swung around the back and tucked down the side of the jetpack and this has been a real saving grace for this figure in my opinion so again I want to give a massive thanks out to Matt at Mudhorn Customs you can follow him on Facebook and here on uh, on Insta well over on Instagram uh, he's got a couple of social channels out there showcasing his work and I picked this up via his eBay store so I'll provide a link down below in the video description if you want to pick up one of these for yourself as I mentioned it's wired so you've got this piece of metal wire running through the cape itself which allows you to pose the cape and then you've got some nice weathering on there as well some tears and rips and a little bit of dusting around the bottom just to give it some uh, added depth and realism so Matt if you're watching a big thanks goes out to you you have saved this figure for me and I just wanted to touch base on that before we jumped into the review of the figure itself so again check out Mudhorn Customs and grab a soft goods cape for yourself so with all that aside, here is of course the Mandalorian as he comes fresh out of the packet. Uh, a great figure as I mentioned. Um, it does take some recycled parts from the original Mandalorian um, and just modifies them slightly to include uh, Beskar armour. Uh, in my opinion, this is probably the better of the two figures as it really just recreates the Mandalorian's look from the duration or the majority of the Mandalorian TV series. Obviously, he gets the Beskar armour within the first couple of episodes of the show and this figure nicely reflects his look throughout the majority of the series. He does come with some additional accessories as well, which we'll touch base on throughout this review. But before we do that, as always, let's take a look at the packaging that he comes in. So once again, we do get the new standard Black Series packaging with this figure. As with the Stormtrooper and the armor I gave you a look at in my last review, the packaging has this bronze, almost copper color scheme to it to uh, signify that this character and figure is indeed from the Mandalorian. You've got the Black Series logo featured up the top and down the side, you've got that really nice artwork of the character which stood side by side with other figures from the Mandalorian. Uh, creates a really nice montage of different characters so that's really really cool um, on the back you've got a brief description of the character accompanied by that image once again and as you can see this is number one from the Mandalorian so instead of uh, each black series figure being numbered and uh, continuing in numerical order um, you've got number one and number two for each of the different uh, chapters I'll call it of the Star Wars saga so really cool packaging, again really nice and substantial, um, 
a lot more visually appealing in my opinion and what's really cool about this is that they are 100% recyclable the plastic tray just slides out of the uh, the cardboard shell and then you can uh, recycle your plastic and cardboard separately which is always good so with packaging aside let's take a look at the figure itself and here he is, once again a great addition to the Black Series line. Uh, we will touch base on the accessories first, as these were one of the, or one of them at least, was one of the selling points of this figure for me personally, and that is the aforementioned Mandalorian jetpack. This is a really cool piece, uh, probably could have done with a little bit more in the way of paint applications. It's a bit bland, um, a bit basic, um, but very cool to have included this nonetheless. Um, it's definitely in keeping with uh, sort of the Django Fett jetpacks that we see uh, during the latter stages of Attack of the Clones as opposed to the Boba Fett style jetpacks with the lengthy missile poking out at the top. Uh, but still very cool nonetheless. Um, obviously you can plug this in to the back of the Mandalorian but as I mentioned earlier you can't do that while the cape is in place. So if you do want to remove the cape and display him with the jetpack he does look very very cool indeed. So very happy to have this um, included with the figure. The figure itself comes with a few accessories as well. Obviously we get the Mandalorian's trademark blaster pistol, which looks really, really cool and can be displayed in the holster on the belt. He also comes with his pulse rifle, which does fit into the slot on the back of the figure a lot better than the original release it still has a tendency to get knocked out and flop around but this one does sit in place a little bit more securely which is always good one of my initial gripes with the figure or the first figure of the mandalorian and as i mentioned he does come with this plastic cape which side by side with that soft goods cape from mudhorn customs is definitely inferior um, display is fine but uh, i would have much preferred a soft goods cape to be included with this figure from the start. In terms of overall detail, he looks fantastic. I love this dull silver finish on the Beskar armour. It's not quite vac metal, it's not reflective as it is in the show, but it still looks really, really nice. It definitely looks like an upgrade to his original armour we see during the first couple of episodes. Of course, he's got new gauntlets with the whistling birds in there. Got the flamethrower on the opposite side. He's got the bandolier with all his ammo pouches and cool stuff going on there. And of course, on the shoulder plate, he does have his mudhorn signet indicating that he and the child are a clan of two. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where that story goes in season two of the series. Now in terms of articulation, he does come with pretty much all the same articulation the original Mandalorian figure came with. We've got a ball joint at the head, um, and what's really cool about this one once again is that there's a ball joint in the top and in the base of the neck, so he does get a, a really nice fluid range of movement there. We have hinges and a butterfly joint at the shoulder, so again great articulation there. Hinges at the elbows, wrists, and a ball joint at the torso, which is slightly hindered by the bandolier strap. And then we have hinges at the hips, swivels at the upper thighs, a double joint in the knee, and a hinge and a rocker at the ankle. So great articulation. Uh, again, if you've picked up the original Mandalorian from the Black Series line, then you know what to expect in terms of posability. But I think the real selling point of this one is just the fact that he comes in that really cool upgraded armour, which I'm a huge fan of. I think it looks great. Very, very impressed with this one. Now, as I mentioned, you can display the figure with the jetpack as well, um, but with the plastic cape removed, of course. And if you proceed to remove the pulse rifle, where have I put the jetpack? There it is, hiding away on the floor there. If you pop that in, uh, you do have to align the bandolier strap with the hole on the back plate but once you do that the jetpack sits in nice and tight and that creates a really cool look for the mando as well once again i do prefer to display this one with the cape and jetpack at the same time but if you don't want to invest in a soft goods third party cape then uh, i'm sure this look 
will do just fine for your displays. So great sculpt, great articulation and great paint applications. Very, very happy with this figure and I would definitely recommend picking him up and I'm really looking forward to more Mandalorian figures later on down the line. So that's going to do it for this review on the Mandalorian, complete with Beskar armour from the Black Series 6-inch line. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'll be back with many more very soon. So until then, as always, thank you for watching, keep collecting, and may the Force be with you.